Hi, this is geometry, um, lesson four dash three, proving and applying the SAS and SSS congruence criteria. In this lesson, we'll be able to use the SAS and SSS to determine whether the triangles are congruent. Let's look at explore and reason. Make five triangles that have a five inch side, a six inch side, and one 40 degrees angle. Okay, we're gonna make five triangles, five different triangles that are um, five inch side, six inch side, and one 40 degrees angle. How many unique triangles can you make? So keep drawing a triangle. Okay. I have this one and your textbook also has a different one where you have a five inch on the bottom and then six inch on um, the bigger one, right? So how many different triangles can we make satisfying all these conditions, right? What, how many different ones? So there's one from the textbook. If you uh, connect the other, points to make a triangle and this is mine this one has a different orientation okay but it needs to have a five inch side and a six inch side and a 40 degrees angle okay but 40 degrees angle doesn't always have to be between this two five inches and six inches right it could be also um on the other okay so i could do 40 degrees and then 50 degrees okay i could do five inch and six inch here Okay, so how many different triangles can you make? You'll notice that you can only make four different triangles that are truly different. How are the unique triangles different from each other? How are they different? All triangles with the 40 degrees angle between five inches and six sides were the same size and shapes. They seem like they're unique, like they're different triangles, but um, you'll see, you'll notice that all triangles with the 40 degrees angle between five inches and six inches sides were the same size and shape. So how are SAS and SSS used to show that two triangles are congruent? So this was when you have two sides that are the same, the angle between them is the same, the triangles will be congruent. Let's look at example one. Explore the S side angle side congruence criterion. Okay, given two triangles with two pairs of sides congruent and the, indicate, and the included angles congruent, you can verify that the triangles are congruent. So first, in order that in order to prove congruency, you need to show that they could be mapped uh, with rigid motions. Okay. So if you translate RST so that it comes here right below X Y Z, and then you do a reflection, then we have rigid motion that maps RST to X Y Z. And rigid motions preserve side lengths and angle measures, so they're going to be congruent triangles. Okay. Let's look at a try question. What rigid motion or composition of rigid motion shows that U V W maps to X Y Z? What kind of transformation can you use? You can see 
uh, that u v w has to map to x y z in the same order. So u v w in the same order. So then you can reflect on this line, right? If you use rotation, the points are going to be different. You might have to use multiple more transformations. Okay, so you can have more than one answers, but um, you can reflect on this line or you can translate UVW so that it's exactly, uh, the point W is exactly on Z and then you can reflect right there. Uh, if you can't figure out the equation of this reflection, uh, it's better to describe it like that, okay? So let's translate triangle UVW to map W to Z. And then we're going to reflect triangle UVW over a vertical line through Z to map u to x and v to y. And now we've mapped all the points accordingly. So theorem 4-3 has a side angle side congruence criterion. If two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. So if you can just check if, they, if, if two triangles have two sides and they include an angle that's the same, you can conclude that the triangles are congruent without trying to figure out if there are rigid motions and all that, right? It's going to be easier to prove using this theorem now. And another theorem, 4-4, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, CPCTC. This is very important, very, very important, okay? If two triangles are congruent, then each pair of corresponding sides is congruent, and each pair of corresponding angles is congruent, okay? If two triangles are congruent, all the sides are congruent, all the angles are congruent. Okay, this theorem is called CPCTC. Let's look at example two. Apply the SAS congruence criteria. Ali cuts two triangles from a rectangular piece of metal along the dashed line to make earrings. How can Ali show that the earrings are the same size and shape? Okay, we're gonna draw, we can draw diagrams to represent the earrings. So cut it into a diagonal. And then we have two uh, triangles that have the same length because you're cutting from a rectangle. Opposite sides are equal length. So BC is equal to AD, CD is equal to AB. So, and we know that the rectangles have right angles. So angle C is 90 degrees, angle A is 90 degrees. Using the SAS congruence criterion, these two triangles are congruent. Okay. Let's look at try a question. Given that AB is parallel to CD and AB is congruent to CD, how can you show that the angles B and D are congruent? Okay, it looks like we only have few information, but that's enough. Why? Okay, given, so this is a proving question. You need to state the given facts first. Given um, lines A, B, and C, D being a parallel and A, B congruent to C, D, you can tell what? B, A, C, and DCA are alternative interior angles. Remember the um, the parallel the parallel lines theorems, right? We got some properties with the angles, right? So my alternate interior angles theorem, angles theorem angles BAC and DCA are congruent. 
B, C, A are congruent, okay? And also, A, C is congruent to itself because it's itself, right? Everything is congruent to itself. And this is called the reflexive property. And so, using the property, the theorem that we just looked at, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA by SAS theorem. Okay, and we have to prove that angles B and D are congruent. Angle B is congruent to angle D by C, P, C, T, C. So first, you have to prove that the triangles are congruent, and then all parts uh, of the triangles are congru uh, congruent uh, if they're corresponding, right? So then you can prove that the angles B and D are congruent by CPCPC. We have another theorem today, side, side, side congruent criterion. Also, if all three sides of one triangle are congruent to all three sides of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent, okay? How can we prove that this is true? Let's see. Given all these sides are congruent, we're gonna prove the triangles are congruent, okay? First, can you translate ABC, so point B maps to point E, okay? We're gonna translate. And then we come here. Okay, and then uh, we know that B maps to E now, and that's what we want, B to E. And we also want A to D, C to F. So here's B, here's A, and here's C. What do we do? When we want A to map to D and C to come here, we rotate and then it's gonna come here. So we're gonna rotate 180 degrees and then we can use rigid motions uh, to, to map the triangles, okay? So let's uh, look at try it. Let's show that there is a rigid motion that maps triangle PQR to triangle STU. Okay, there's a hint. Make sure you consider a reflection when mapping PQR to STU because PQR has to exactly map to STU, not SUT. Okay, the order does matter. So, first, what can you do? You can, you can, uh, you can rotate it so that P and Q lie here, okay? And then R is here. And then you do a reflection over P, Q, and then you have R mapping to you. Does that make sense? Do rotation, maybe a little bit of translation if needed, so that it maps exactly to S, T. PQ maps exactly on ST, and then you do a reflection, okay? And so we can say, um, and also because all sides are congruent, we can use the side, side, side theorem. First, let's say triangle PQR is congruent to triangle STU by SSS theorem by, by the definition of congruency, there is a sequence of rigid motions that maps triangle PQR to STU. For example, rotation, uh, rotation, 
from P Q uh, to map S T. Then you reflect over S T to map R to U. Okay. All right, let's look at example four. Determine congruent triangles. Which of the following pairs are congruent by SAS or SSS? Okay, uh, we look at these sides. All the sides are congruent, so it's congruent by SSS. This one, sides are the same, and you have angles that are in between, congruent by SAS. These one, we have two congruent sides, but angle is not between the two congruent sides. So you cannot use SAS. It cannot be determined. This one, you can use the SAS because the angle that is, that's congruent is between the two congruent sides, okay? What additional information is needed to show triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF by SAS? So in order to have SAS, you need side and then angle between another side. Okay, we got a side, right? And then we got an angle. So which side do we have to get so that we get the angle between them? We need AC is congruent to FB, right? But by SSS, we, we also need that BC is congruent to Yes. Okay. So let's look at this try question. Come back when you are ready. Number four A is triangle SCU congruent to triangle XYZ. Can you tell? Yes. Why? Because you have two congruent sides and an angle between them that are congruent as well. So using SAS. Um, STU is congruent to XYZ. Part B, is any additional information needed to show these two triangles are congruent? DEF must map to GHJ. So part B, yes, you need an additional information. This angle is not enough, right? Um, in order to use SAS, you need the angle between them, between the congruent sides. Or if you want to use SSS, you need to know that HG is congruent to ED. So yes, you need additional information. Um, if you know that angle F is congruent to angle J, uh, then uh, use, you can use SAS. If you know HG is congruent to ED, then you can use SSS, okay? All right, so in summary, what did we learn in this lesson? We learned uh, the two theorems and how to use them. So side, angle, side, remember that the angle, the congruent angle must be between the congruent sides. Side, side, side theorem uh, is when you have all congruent sides for two different triangles um, to prove that the two triangles are congruent. That was lesson 4-3, um, triangle congruence criteria. Thanks for watching. We're going to continue with the next lesson in the next video. Bye.